Hey guys, I've gotten a lot of requests for a video about how to feed your goldfish. So this video is going to go over what are some really good foods for goldfish, how often you should feed your fish, like what's a good feeding schedule for your fish, and finally um, how much you should feed your fish. Personally, I really like to just choose a staple diet, whether it's some kind of pellet food or maybe a gel food, and then add in things as like little treats as supplements to that staple diet. So first let's go over what types of foods are available for goldfish. So first are pellet foods and you should definitely avoid floating pellets. You should only feed them ones that are labeled as sinking pellets. And that's because any food that floats on the surface the goldfish will come up to the surface to eat it obviously and when they're trying to grab the food they'll also be gulping in some air into their digestive tract and that's not good for them. It can lead to buoyancy issues and it's just not, it's not a good habit to get them into. So if you're always feeding sinking food, they never, well they shouldn't ever go up to the surface looking for food, they should just go to the bottom, which is much better for them. And if you are feeding a sinking pellet and you notice that your goldfish is still having some buoyancy issues on that food, you can try soaking the food in some tank water first, just for about a minute, it doesn't have to be for very long. Just soak it in a little cup of tank water and then put it in the tank and see if that might help. And so you're probably wondering, well what are some good pellet foods for goldfish because there are so many out there. Well I've been using for years uh, Saki Hikari Purple Bag Fancy Goldfish Diet. Um, I like it a lot, my fish have done really well on it. Um, there's also Hikari Lionhead, which a lot of people like, especially for Arandas, Lionheads, Ranchus, things like that. Another one that a lot of people like is Pro Gold. Um, it's a very good one too, you can get it from Goldfish Connection. And then there's also one called Show Gold that I think is basically the same thing as Pro Gold. And you can get that on eBay and other places, I think. And then there's Omega One. A lot of people say that one is very cost effective compared to the others and just as good. So if you're on a tight budget, maybe consider Omega One first. And then finally there's New Life Spectrum. And a lot of people like this one because it comes in, I think, three different size ranges. So you can really match it to um, the size of the fish. Personally though, I actually like the small pellet size that foods like Saki Hikari have because I just feel like the smaller pellet size will pass through the digestive tract of the goldfish easier so it's less of a chance that it'll get stuck you know somewhere and get them blocked up or constipated so I don't know some people like that they can go up to a bigger pellet size with the new life spectrum but personally for me I prefer smaller pellet sizes even with large goldfish Alright, so the next category of food I'm going to talk about is flake food, and this is probably the most commonly um, thought of food when you think of what to feed your goldfish. Most people just think, oh, goldfish eat flakes. Duh. <laughs> but in general, flake food is not good for goldfish simply because it's, um, it sits on the surface. Again, you know, like a floating pellet, it's going to cause the fish to come up to the surface and gulp at the surface to get their food and then it might lead to buoyancy problems because they're ingesting air and it might lead to habits where they go up to the surface and gulp because they're hungry and then they'll ingest air that way and so I just think anytime you can avoid forming a surface gulping habit in your fish you should. So personally I would stay away from flakes. I've also heard some people say that they dissolve really quickly or something because they are very thin, you know, they're flakes. Um, so once they're in the water, the nutrients leach out really fast. So I don't know if that's true, but even if it's not, I don't like flakes just because of the surface gulping um, thing that can happen. And another category of foods that I don't recommend are freeze-dried foods. And that's for similar reasons, actually. They are very dry, you know, they're freeze-dried and they're kind of dry and crusty, um, crumbly and stuff, so they hold a lot of air inside, and so even if you soak them, they're still gonna hold a lot of the air inside them, so when the goldfish eat them, they're ingesting air, and also a lot of people say the freeze-drying process takes out a lot of the good nutrients, so it's kind of like 
if you want to compare it to a human food, it's kind of like eating potato chips. You know, it's like a snack, but it's not really that good for you. And yeah, so I just, I would just avoid freeze-dried foods for goldfish. And the next category of foods are gel foods. And gel foods can either be commercially prepared diets that you add water to, or they can be ones that you make on your own, homemade gel food diets. Personally, I don't like homemade gel food diets anymore. I used to, but I think for the average goldfish hobbyist, it's kind of difficult because it's not, it's really difficult to get it nutritionally balanced for fish. You know, you can throw in a few things that are good for fish to eat, but it might not have the essential minerals and vitamins in the essential um, ratios for to support healthy um, biological function in the fish. So I think it's really tough to get it just right. But if you absolutely want to make your own homemade gel food, that's fine, you know, it's up to you. I would just stress the importance of variety. So just mix it up, you know, always put in as many different food ingredients as you can and switch it up. Like every time you make it, maybe add something instead of something else. And then also try to add in some vitamins as well. Um, maybe at some point in the future I'll do a tutorial about how to make your own gel food. Um, but I don't have one now, so you can always just do a Google search or search on YouTube. There's tons of tutorials out there, so just find one that you like, find one that incorporates a lot of variety, and then switch it up every now and then. And then, of course, there are the commercially prepared gel foods. And right now, I'm a really big fan of the Rapashi Superfoods line of gel food for fish. The ones that are best for goldfish are Super Green and Soylent Green. And a lot of people find that a 50-50 mix of the two is what they prefer for their goldfish. And some people say that um, the super green is better for older goldfish because it has less animal protein. So it's just more um, plant protein based. And then the soylent green is very similar to that but it has more animal protein. So like from insects and things like that. So that is better for younger goldfish. And if you're not sure what age your goldfish is or you think it's just kind of intermediate in age like one or one to three years old or something a 50 50 mix of the two is a safe bet so why not just do that and then they also have a spawn and grow variety which is good for goldfish fry or also to mix in um, for goldfish that you are trying to condition for spawning in the spring and I do have a tutorial about how to make um, Rupashi Soylent Green or Super Green gel food. So I'll link to that in the video and you can watch that and it's really simple. Basically you just add water and then microwave it and let it cool. And next I'm going to talk about frozen foods for goldfish. This is a really good option too. Um, usually I just use frozen foods as kind of a supplement to mix in with their staple diet. I don't really consider most frozen foods to be a staple diet. So things like frozen bloodworms, frozen brine shrimp, or um, mysis shrimp, or daphnia, or spirulina, brine shrimp, things like that, they're not really um, well-rounded diets if you just fed that because it's mostly just like insect stuff, um, mostly. But like I use frozen bloodworms and I mix that in like, I don't know, a few times a week. I try to do it like five times a week, but it probably ends up being more like two or three times a week. So that's just a good additional supplement because bloodworms have a lot of good protein for goldfish specifically. And of course there are other types of frozen foods um, that I mentioned before too. And I honestly don't use those too much. I mostly just stick with frozen bloodworms, but you can feel free to mix it up and try different things as you want to. If you have a goldfish that's very prone to floatiness and you've tried lots of different things and lots of different foods and nothing has really helped too much, you can also try a type of frozen food called emerald entree. And some people have reported that their really floaty fish do better on it. However, it's extremely messy, I've heard. So, yeah, there's pros and cons, of course, to everything. Um, but this one is very messy, so just be warned if you try it. 
you're probably gonna have to clean your tank afterwards or maybe transfer the fish to like a small holding tank where it can eat and then when it's done eating you can put it back in the main tank so you don't mess up your main tank super badly and a lot of times people wonder what kind of veggies they can feed their fish and so often um, green peas are recommended especially for a swim bladder like if you say oh my fish has a swim bladder problem a lot of people will just kind of flood you and say didn't you know you can cure that with peas and that's actually not really the case at all if it's a true swim bladder problem like my fish Callisto my big red brad till she just had a severe swim bladder problem and um, she eventually got, it got so bad and nothing would help it that I did have to euthanize her and I wanted to know what was going on with her so I did a necropsy after she died and I found that her swim bladder the caudal lobe was deflated and shriveled up just completely unusable and the cranial lobe which is in front was maybe slightly enlarged. So in cases like that, where it's a swim bladder deformity, peas won't do anything. I mean, pea, eating peas can't fix the swim bladder structure. It won't like cause the swim bladder to reinflate and be normal again. So you have to be careful when recommending peas for swim bladder problems because it doesn't. It's not a fix all. Of course, you know nothing is ever a fix all. But peas can help. Um, Possibly when your goldfish is constipated because um, it can help you know provide that roughage to get it get their um, GI tract moving However, there are better options than peas. So some better options are kale, spinach Some people like romaine lettuce, green beans, broccoli, and especially edamame so yeah, just know that Okay, peas might work, but there are better options that we should maybe be looking at and recommending a little bit more. And if you want to mix in veggies like this to your goldfish's uh, regular diet, that's perfectly fine. You can probably feed fresh veggies every day if you wanted to, um, or you could just do it like a few times a week or something. So it's really up to you. If you're feeding something like super green or soylent green gel food, that already has a lot of greens in it. So you probably don't need to add in any veggies. Um, you still can. You just you don't really need to, and in fact it might be better to supplement with blood worms instead, you know, something that's um, more protein rather than more greens, because those gel foods already have a lot of greens in it. So it just depends, you know, what you supplement with really just depends on what your staple diet is. And then there are other miscellaneous things that people sometimes like to feed their goldfish, like um, sometimes people feed them boiled egg whites, which are good for them, and sometimes people feed them chopped up earthworms or other types of worms, which are really good for them. So you can kind of get creative with it. Um, oh, so another thing people sometimes feed their fish are different types of fruits, and that's okay, but fruits should only be done really sparingly because they're so sugary. Um, so yeah, you can feed them fruits. Uh, I would just do it very sparingly. And then other veggies I forgot to mention are things like zucchini and cucumber, um, even pumpkin. Like I've fed my goldfish pumpkins before when I was carving pumpkins and I just had some extra pumpkin guts so I just threw them in the tank. So you can get creative with it and just see what they would like eating. Alright, so the next topic is going to be how much to feed your fish. This is something that's sometimes difficult to discern because goldfish do love to eat so much they act like they're constantly hungry and that's because um, you know in nature the ancestor of the goldfish is a scavenger type of fish and so it will just search around and looking for food all day long and it usually gets like a little morsel here and a morsel there so it's it's not eating a lot but it is constantly eating so how much should you feed your goldfish um, goldfish in aquariums are not are not constantly scavenging like that we have to feed them and so we have to decide how much is the right amount to feed my fish and a lot of times that varies case by case but generally anywhere from 0.5 percent to 2 percent of their body weight in food daily is the right range and that's gonna vary depending on the temperature of the water 
in lower temperatures, cooler temperatures, goldfish don't need to eat as much. In higher temperatures, they're going to need to eat a little bit more. It's also going to depend on their age. You know, very, very young goldfish and fries should eat more than an old goldfish. You know, old, older goldfish should not eat as much. And also your desired growth rate. You know, if you want for some reason like you're going to be showing your fish or you're conditioning it for breeding or something and you want it to reach maturity faster you can feed it more or if you don't really care about that and you just want to maintain your fish instead of pushing for more growth you can feed a little bit less and just see from there how it goes generally for most people a good amount of food to aim for is one percent of the fish's body weight per day and so I keep talking about percent of their body weight. You notice I'm not saying, okay, feed like this size amount of food. Um, and that's because like body weight, their goldfish have lots of different body forms. Some goldfish are super compact and really fat and some goldfish are longer and slim. So you can't really say, okay, for this size goldfish, you should feed this amount. It should really go on body weight to be more accurate. And it's actually really easy to weigh your goldfish. If you're not familiar with weighing goldfish, it might seem like daunting and scary to do, but it's really not. It's simple. I have a video about how to do that and I'll link to it here. Um, so yeah, just watch the video and learn how to weigh your fish and you should weigh them. I try to do it once a month or once every couple of months just to stay on top of it because especially when they're young and growing so you can um, find out how much they're growing and then adjust their food accordingly. And if you absolutely can't get a scale for whatever reason or you want to know how much to feed them um, in the meantime while you're looking for a scale and you go buy one, a good rule of thumb I suppose is feed them like two good mouthful size amounts. So if you're making gel food, cut it into squares that look like, you know, a mouthful size and give them two mouthfuls like two or three times a day each fish all right so now we're going to talk about how to feed your fish what is a good routine for feeding now like i said before the ancestor of goldfish was a scavenger they ate tiny morsels here and there all day long so the best way that we can feed our goldfish is to feed to try to mimic that as closely as possible and of course this is easiest to do if you are home a lot and you can, you know, every few hours toss in a little bit of food, but not everybody is. So even if you just can feed them two different times a day, that's really helpful. You should just avoid feeding them all their food in one sitting each day because that will probably overload their digestive system and it might cause them to get constipated and have floaty or swim, not swim bladder issues, but, you know, buoyancy issues. So definitely avoid feeding them all their food at once. If you can, the more meals you can break it up into over the day, the better in my opinion. And if that's difficult for you because you have long working hours or something like that, you can look into getting an auto feeder too. Some people um, recommend against auto feeders because they think they're unpredictable and they might just spew out all the food, you know, malfunction and spew out all the food. But I, I've been using the Fishmate F14 model for a couple of years I think now and I've never had a problem like that. It's always been reliable um, and I found it to be a really good way to feed my fish. So you can set it to however many intervals you want and then it feeds them that amount over like a 10 minute time period. So um, it helps also, I think it helps the goldfish be more active because they're like, oh I'm constantly finding food, you know, all, all day throughout the day. So they keep swimming around looking for the food because they know that eventually it's going to drop down they're going to find it. So I found that it improved their activity levels and it also greatly improved their growth rates and they just seemed a lot more healthy and active when I was using an auto feeder. So it's not right for everyone but if you think that you can use it responsibly, you know, not like overload it with so much food that it's going to pollute the tank then it's a great tool. So finally, I just want to say that, of course, every single goldfish is different. And you'll find over time that 
what food works for one of your fish might not work for all of them. So you might have to do some experimenting around trying different foods to see what works well for everyone. Or you might have to separate some of them and say, okay, these ones can only have this food and these ones can only have that food. It just really depends on your fish. So feel free to try different things and see what works well for your fish. There's not one thing that I can recommend that's going to be perfect for everyone because everyone's fish are different. So I hope this video helped you guys and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.